Hi, uh, my name is David Weiss and I'm a formative assessment specialist for New Vision for Public Schools. And I, I want to talk today about my journey from treating students as mistake makers to really treating them as sense makers. Uh, I'm going to talk through the lens of, of myself as an educator. So when I, when I first started teaching, I really closely monitored student behavior. I, I had a, this sheet that I put dots on. I put dots for when they were late, I put dots when they didn't do their homework, I put dots when they um, weren't participating in class. I was really the dot master. And I kind, of, I kind of used those dots as a leverage for improving student behavior. I knew there was a link between the behavior and how they learned, but um, sort of focused on that. And actually, I didn't really monitor student learning, which I think is extremely problematic, except sort of periodically with a unit test or something like that, at which point it was a little too late. So uh, I realized that I kind of wanted to pay attention to what they were doing more frequently than just once every six weeks. So I started sort of keeping track of what they were doing in class. And I really sort of looked at the work they were doing and I saw mistakes and I would try to give them feedback right away about those mistakes or try to design my lessons so that they were less likely to make mistakes. So I would say things like, don't forget to multiply the x by x, you get x squared. Or um, x times, uh, if you distribute x through the parentheses, you, you have to watch out for the sign of the second number. These kinds of sort of tips to help reduce the probability that my students would make mistakes. And you know, to some degree that worked. And then um, over time I noticed that students would write things that were kind of crazy, like I didn't understand them. And I thought, well, why are they writing these things? What? I didn't say that when I was teaching this thing. Why are they writing this thing? And so I, I sort of formed a hypothesis. Students were doing something that I could not directly observe. I thought, maybe students are thinking. And actually, maybe students are thinking quite a lot. And I thought, that's something I, I want to know about. I want to know what are they thinking, because it, it clearly has an impact on what they're learning. So I started trying to design activities that would give me some insight in what they were thinking. I started listening to my students, and I think this is sort of a critical shift here. But I was still listening to see if what they were saying or thinking was right versus, you know, like, did it match with what I thought the world should be like rather than what were they actually saying and why did this matter to them? Why did it make sense to them? That was not something I thought about at that time. And then, um, I sort of realized over time that, you know, students are thinking in sort of somewhat predictable ways. Maybe it'd be useful to try to anticipate how they're thinking. So I sort of created templates to sort of keep track of if they're going to do this task, what are they going to be thinking about and what is that going to look like, what is that going to sound like, and how am I going to respond to the ways they're thinking, sort of as opposed to responding to what they were writing, which I think is an important distinction. And uh, one time I actually figured out 11 different ways that a student might approach a problem and then went and taught the lesson. And um, you know, actually none of those 11 ways actually matched anything my students did. Human cognition is really complex. So then I also started sort of over time questioning my beliefs about mathematics and what it means to learn mathematics. Is mathematics sort of a set of disconnected, I think, well, let, me, let me amend that. Is mathematics a set of connected ideas that have been sort of developed over a long period of time? Or is mathematics a process that we use to sort of make sense of the world? Is it some combination of those two things? And in what role does student thinking play into the development of math mathematical ideas? And what about students talking to each other about those ideas? How important is that? So as these sort of beliefs about my class emerged, I started sort of questioning my approach. And I also realized that, you know, students are thinking about things and saying things based on their thinking because they have beliefs and knowledge about the world and they're trying to make sense of the world. So when they make a mistake, or what I perceive to be a mistake, you know, there's some thinking behind that mistake. It's not like the students sort of arbitrarily saying things from time to time. And how I respond to their mistakes makes a difference. And we have a culture where we sort of treat this as true or false, that's a mistake, that's correct, and I don't know that that way of approaching student thinking is actually all that helpful. Uh, for example, recently my son told me, uh, this is about a month ago, he said that one third uh, is equal to three quarters. And the old me would have said, no, that's not true. No, one third is not equal to three quarters. The new me said, why? And he said, well, the three on the bottom tells you how many quarters there are. And I 
decided at the time that my best response was to be, well, that's interesting, which is my normal response now to when my son says things, whether they're right or wrong. And so then uh, I thought about it later and said, well, let's think about what he knows. He knows that one half equals two quarters, in which case his sort of idea that the two in the denominator of one half tells you how many quarters there are is totally true. It works perfectly. So there's some really logical reasoning, mathematical reasoning that he's doing, that if I treated that initial contact with his idea as a mistake and just sort of shut him down, that that would be kind of, I think, disastrous. I would never learn about what he was thinking. I wouldn't be able to present opportunities for him to come up with other consistent rules about how mathematics works. And when I think about, you know, children, I, I, I think I used to think they were broken that they were like little adults that, that we were trying to fix and change. And now I don't, I don't think they are. I don't think children are broken. I think children are you know, perfect the way they are. We have this huge variety of human experiences and we sort of, I think, stop taking advantage of it when we sort of arbitrarily assign thinking to some scale of right versus wrong. It's sort of the ways we think about the world that are important. So then I think of my own sons and I think, well, if I am teaching my sons. I want other people to teach, treat children the way that I want my sons to be treated. Why would I want anything else? I want them to grow up in a world where their ideas matter, where they get to talk to each other and have really rich mathematical experiences with other people. Mathematics is a set of connected ideas that people developed over time, but it, it is part of a community of mathematics. It's not separate from human activity. It doesn't live by itself. So what do I have to do? I want all of us to sort of think about how do we treat students, children's ideas? How do we hold their way they're thinking as sort of sacred? And how do we um, support them in mathematics classrooms? So at the end of a 13 years of mathematics, they aren't thinking, wow, I just sort of memorized a bunch of arcane rules that I don't understand. And instead they think, well, all of that really made sense. I understand and I am now able to be part of a community of people who do mathematics. Mm -hmm.